Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you guys about seven cards that I feel are slept on coming out in Set 13 Supreme Rivalry. These are cards that I feel like people just aren't talking enough about. I feel like they're really good and I feel like I can point out some interesting niche uses that you guys may not have been considering. So with that being said, if you're new here, definitely subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a video. And if you guys want to help support the channel and you're interested in buying or pre-ordering any of the cards you see in today's video, make sure to go down to the description, use my link TCG player. It does help the channel out a lot. That being said, let's get started with the first card. Firstly, we're talking about SS Vegeta Sand Tenacity. I feel like no one's talking about the fact we have a, an inherent answer to burn damage in the game, specifically Invoker, which many people are frustrated to play against. So let's give the card a quick read. It's a four drop, 19K, pretty good stats considering you play it for free, which we'll see in a second. If your leader card's blue and you take damage from one of your opponent's non-keyword skills, like Invoker, Catastrophic Blow, and other forms of burn damage that Red has, for instance, you may play this card from your hand. If you do add a top card of deck to your life and you can't activate the auto skills on copies of this card for the game. So that last restriction there makes it a little bit more difficult to use because the question becomes how many copies of this do you play in your side deck? Do you side three to, you know, kind of guarantee you see it against Invoker? Can you get away with two? I would say you could probably get away with two considering the fact that most decks that are going to deal burn damage to you aren't going to do it until turn four, turn five, right? Invoker generally always going to be turn five or later that they're going to try to burn you to death with catastrophic blow. Then you have cards like ISR Nappa and some other weird red cards that realistically don't see play. So you wouldn't really be siding this for those cards. But if you happen to just come against them and you're playing blue and you're already signing this card for Invoker, it does have that application in that random rogue matchup but for invoker i think this is a pretty good two of sideboard for blue just considering that you're able to negate some of that burn damage what's funny is this card's actually playable in invoker because it doesn't specify a mono blue leader so with that in mind i'm sure invoker mirror matches are gonna be a ton of fun anyways let's go to the next card we have cooler effortless strike so I don't know just for me i feel like people aren't talking about king cold a lot some people talking about it being like a, a way for green to come back i'm not necessarily sold on that i did talk about that in my meta predictions for the set which came out earlier this week but anyways i think cooler effortless strike is just a really good counterplay outside of king cold which i feel like people are also not talking about so counterplay play this card the battle card being played is only cost of four or less it's placed the owner's drop area instead of being played so pretty much identical to preemptive strike but you also have a battle card attached to that so you get a beater by using that now keep in mind it's a four cost but the permanent says during your opponent's turn reduce the en uh, energy cost of this card in your hand by one for each green extra card in your battle area and drop area that's a really important thing because with a lot of these king cold cards they do get their cost reduced by having your field cards in play but a few of them get their cost reduced by also having uh, extra cards in the drop area right so if you use dormant if you're playing big more if you're playing some other sort of green leader that has an inherent field card there are other ways to reduce coolers cost and even if you can only reduce it to a two cost that's still a really good rate comparing it to preemptive strike especially when you factor in the auto that makes your opponent discard an additional card if they have eight or more cards in their hand so i think this card's really slept on as a generic green pretty much good card so i did want to kind of point that out that you should be looking at this card if you're looking at other green like generic toolboxy types of decks now we have King Vegeta Hidden Ambitions, one drop counter counter for red. Now I feel like a lot of people did talk about this when the card was first revealed, but ever since then it's pretty much fallen off and that's somewhat understandable, but I think it's still a card you should heavily consider side decking because this becomes one of those cards that if you're not playing it, if your opponent knows you're not playing it, maybe like they just get the inkling you're not playing it because they haven't seen it all game long, or maybe it's top cut and you're able to view each other's deck lists. If you're not playing this card, your opponent is then allowed to counter for free without getting punished without having to worry about it right so you pretty much fall into that when you're looking at blue with dimension magic black with power burst and green with dormant potential unleashed right and shocking death ball occasionally so again it's kind of the card you really want to just have somewhere in your 65 just to you know basically show the threat of it but the activate main's also not bad ever since we've seen the vegeta's lineage uh king vegeta tournament pack cards right there's vegeta switching gears which this card can play now i wouldn't really say you probably main deck this just for that effect i don't think that's necessarily what you want to be doing but with that in mind i think it's a card you definitely want to include you don't want to want to let the hype die out you don't want to forget this card's like a thing right so i think it's kind of important to point out that this is one of those cards if you're not playing it or not using it enough people are going to start negating for free thinking they can get away with it just wanted to point that out then we have ssb vegeta at full power so back to the king vegeta deck 
I feel like people aren't talking about this card enough. This card in and of itself is absolutely insane. A lot of stuff that I see pertaining to King Vegeta talks about how it's like an insane aggro deck, how it's super fast rush deck, which in some ways it can be. It's certainly no Red Broly and it's certainly no Storm of the past, right? It's That's just not what the deck is. But it is fast, it is aggressive, it does put on a lot of pressure. But I feel like people say that and they forget about SSB Vegeta at full power. This card is one of the best boss monsters, in my opinion, that have been printed in recent sets. You evolve it for three over a Vegeta BR, you draw a card, and then the auto says if this card's in rest mode, one of your opponent's battle cards is played or attacks, you may choose that card, he gets minus 10,000 power for the turn, not once per turn, keep in mind. And then auto, when this card's removed from your battle area, buy an opponent's skill, place one card from your opponent's life in their drop area. So uh, if they play cards and or attack, no matter what, when this card's in rest mode, your opponent, uh, they just get minus 10. So that just gets you super big value uh, throughout an entire turn and if they remove this thing they're critting a life and on top of that it's a three drop 25k double striker with deflect so uh, that's why i play and view king vegeta much more as like a mid-range deck to kind of sit on this guy and don't get me wrong there's some matchups where you want to be aggressive some matchups where you want to sit back and lean on this guy so it kind of just takes you know playing the deck a lot and getting to know which situations you need to do what thing in but i still think it's a really good card that people aren't really considering when they call king vegeta just like super duper aggro Moving along, we have Demigrom Momentary Ally. Now, I've talked about many times, I, I don't really think Supreme Kai of Time is going to be a super competitive deck. I think it's going to be a fine rogue deck, but I think it just has a really bad matchup against blue. But Demigrom Momentary Ally and SR Unison coming out of the set, I feel is really good because of its playability in other strategies, right? So one of the things that mono black aggro players have been trying to figure out for a while, right, is how can I play a mono black aggro deck that uh, still does what I want it to do, but doesn't have to be Vegex. Vegex for a long time, and pretty much even to right now, is still just the best mono black low to the ground swarm spam deck, right? But with Demigrod Momentary Ally, looking at the auto, if your leader is a Black Sand only or God card, you gain Wormhole when you overwhelm, right? So that opens up the door for SS4 Gohan and SS4 Goku. Two leaders that I know people really, really enjoy, but there was just not really much of a reason to play them because they weren't Vegex. Like, Vegex has that insane mill, you get free play battle cards when you mill them. But now with this Unison playing SS4 Goku or SS4 Gohan, you gain this advantage that Vegex doesn't have because Vegex is not a Saiyan only leader. So with that in mind, this is gonna be a really cool avenue to explore strategies like that in SS4 Goku and SS4 Gohan or any other Black Saiyan leader you're looking to mess around with. Maybe even Black Mass Saiyan. We know that deck did well just in a recent tournament. So pretty cool to look at. I like how it gives Black strategies an edge over Vegex when previously there really wasn't a way to do that. Then we have SS Goku, the legend personified. I feel like this card slept on purely because of the fact it's a potential one drop that draws a card that's also a 25k beater. Now, don't get me wrong, your opponent has to have a certain amount of energy, you have to have bond three, but for a lot of these red decks, that's not really too difficult to meet of a requirement, right? Like you just play this on your turn three or your opponent's turn three, depending on who went first or second, and then you have a one energy 25k beater. So don't get me wrong, I don't think this is going to be playable in every single red deck, but I do feel like it's a really good card you're going to want to have in your back pocket. Probably a cheaper SR that won't really see a price hike until there is a strategy where it's really, really good. So this is a card I would just say, pick it up, hold on to it, and eventually there will probably be a strategy where this card is going to be quite good. So just wanted to kind of point that out. And then finally, guys, I want to talk about Deborah Ritual at hand. People for the longest time have been asking for some sort of answer to hand control ever since Mercenary Tau was banned. And even though green has not been doing all that well lately, people are still been asking for that, right? So we have that now in set 13. Auto pay one, when this card is discarded from your hand, buy an opponent's skill, play this card from your drop area, and then when this card's played, draw two cards. So several nice things about this is the fact that you get to play it when your opponent pitches it out of your hand. So if you do run into that green matchup or if green becomes more popular in the meta again, this is an option for you. Also draws two cards. So with this in mind, a lot of people are playing Sand Instincts Goku as the anti-hand control card. You don't really have to do that anymore. Now you can side three to four copies of this common card that essentially does the same thing as Sand Instincts, costs one less energy, but it is more specific in its use in the sense that Sand Instincts could always offer you draw at pretty much any point in the game. Deborah Ritual at hand does require your opponent to discard it out of your hand for that to work but with that in mind guys that just wraps up all the cards i wanted to talk about in today's video cards that i feel like we're not getting enough attention that i feel like are really good so i did want to talk about them today if you guys enjoyed let me know in the comments below thanks for watching and i will see you guys next time